is up guys this is rise and welcome to a fun video here where we are going to be taking a look at halucha in the open great league i'm not exactly sure how to pronounce this trainer's in-game name um but thank you very much for the submission as halucha an exclusive pokemon that you can get down in the mexico region and uh, also some parts of the southern united states i believe and look at this umbreon with a hat i didn't even realize umbreon had a festive hat look at how adorable it is and look at the uh the cool background here this background looks uh different than mine i wonder if this is like a like a test area background this trainer is from but halucha we featured a few times on the channel when it first came out I haven't seen it in a while and it's kind of the forgotten fighter so we're gonna see how it performs here in the open great league umbreon also haven't seen in a while people have kind of gone away from umbreon i guess can come in here with the lantern to try and absorb some of this damage skeledurge although it does not like the lantern matchup still gonna be able to dish out a respectable amount of damage here and gonna put up a shield respecting a potential second shadow ball should be able to get the spark down now has lots of energy for whatever comes in it is the altaria going for the surf i would personally go for the thunderbolt here because they might be thinking they don't need to respect to surf but the oh just barely doesn't get the farm down hmm I'm gonna put up the shield to preserve this energy that he has and it's a feraligator goes to the thunderbolt this is looking kind of tough because down shields for alligator is just such a menace and i don't think you're gonna be able to overcome the feraligator here flying press would do significant damage but halucha i don't think is gonna be able to withstand a hydro cannon definitely not an ice beam if they go for that for alligator looking mean the gator bang ice beam connects knocks out and uh <laughs> a bit of a tough one to start things off here and it's on to the next one halucha the fish and number okay he's switching up the lead mugi wara two two three three switching up the lead you lose the game switch the lead i think the lead was the problem that game but now we see Umbreon into Magnezone. Um, opponent gives him a free Snarl, which is nice. So for proper timing here, you'd want to throw after one Snarl. Three turn versus four turn. Oh, throws after two. I don't love it, but not the end of the world. Foul play coming through. Oh. And uh, okay, this isn't this isn't horrible. Like you can shield this and probably Snarl all the way down. That's That's another play. Goes for the Snarl down here. What's going to come in to greet Umbreon? Gligar. Overtaps a little bit there. Once again, wants to throw after want to throw after one Snarl if you can, just for proper timing. And there we go. Throwing after one. Perfect. Umbreon looking festive with that hat. Shout out to the opponent for running a shiny Shadow Gligar. This Gligar is a little bit of a court breaker for the back line, so it's a great thing that this trainer is seeing it now against the Umbreon. Gonna come in with the lantern. And I would honestly just let it go because yeah, because you kind of need to save a shield for your Halucha. Gonna go for the surf. If the opponent lets this go through, that'd be more convenient. They're gonna shield it. Make your life a little bit more difficult. Now, now you might have to consider shielding just to get off this surf, yeah. Oh, gonna swap. See, that was risky because the opponent could have just aerial aced and won the game but gonna get off the flying press here against pidgeot oh big damage and now you're gonna be able to spark down the pidgeot oh baby and come out with a surf beautiful lantern pulling out the tricks yeah the opponent i think got scared and did a you swap i swap situation but the opponent easily could have just outpaced the uh halucha to a to an aerial ace and then i think won the game so fun one there some of these games right there might be some plays or some of you guys like why is why this trainer make that play we all sometimes make uh could make some slightly different plays and we're all at different elos so uh these are some this is a fun little team and just pointing out some things that could have been done differently here and there if you guys watch me on stream, you know I misplay all the dang time. All the dang time. 
Once again, throwing after two snarls, not ideal. You're letting an entire free spark there. You want to throw after an odd number of snarls. There you go. Throwing after one. Perfect. Beautiful. Umbreon fighting away against this Lantern. Two bulky Great League meta staples going head-to-head. -head. I don't hate throwing right away here because you were just trying to get it off as soon as you could, but still would probably rather go for proper timing here since the Thunderbolt doesn't threaten to knock you out. Foul play does knock out. In comes Dragonite. Okay. Coming in with Lantern. Yeah. The Spark buff has made this a lot of a better matchup for Lantern because now these Sparks add up so much against Dragonite. Also, what's up with these Shiny Shadows? People are rocking the Shiny Shadows. Uh-oh. In comes Pharah, but Halucha's gonna love this matchup. You resist the Bullet Seeds. The only thing you're afraid of here is a Thunder or a potential Flash Cannon. Puts up the shield, and it's just a Power Whip Bait. That's unfortunate. Ah, no. <laughs> Throwing after three. So you're letting in an entire free bullet seed there. You're letting in... Oh, but they let it go. Let's go. Let's go. Flying press coming through. And uh, knocks out the Dragonite. All right. They just gave up. I, uh, I recommend... Um, back in the day, FP Sticks made a video about charge move timing. That's where I learned it from originally. And then eventually, I made my own video about move timing if you type in the search bar rise to the occasion um how to master your charge moves it should come up and i think it's one of the most underrated parts of pvp i think it's one of the most underrated parts it's probably separates like maybe people that could hit veteran from people that can hit legend to be honest because if you're maximizing just like giving yourself a few extra turns essentially every single game multiple times a game um whenever a game ends up being really close or coming down to a few hp or a few energy those uh that timing can really make the difference so i encourage people to watch how that watch that move i get comments uh occasionally like um rise you should make another uh move timing video and let me know if that's something you'd like to see in the comments umbreon spamming off foul plays like there's no tomorrow we see the, see the Halucha swapping. Halucha trying to flex his muscles. Halucha's like a professional wrestler. He's like a, he's a character, man. Halucha going for the flying press. And uh, we're going to see a move come through. I have never really been a WWE fan. I have some friends that are WWE fans. And I used to be a bit of like a WWE hater. I was one of those people that was like, oh, it's fake. How could you like it? And my friends explained to me, like, you don't watch it like a sport. You don't watch it like it's real. Like, you watch it like it's entertainment, like it's a show. And then I started to get it. I was like, oh, you know what? That kind of makes sense. Like, that's kind of fun with all these, like, crazy characters and stuff. As we see Lantern get off the Thunderbolt against Victory Bell. I don't remember if the Umbreon had energy. I don't think it did. Oh, it, oh, Umbreon, let's go, baby. Will this knock out the shiny victory bell? Yes, it will. Oh, but the lantern still has some health. No. So sad. Umbreon gets knocked out. And uh, that's a GG. So yeah, let, let me know in the comments. Any WWE fans or any people like me that... Like my, the previous Rise that was a WWE hater. Saying like, how could you watch that? The equivalent to... People I make fun of today that are like, how can you listen to country music? Like, bruh. Bruh. Have you been on the lake in the summer on a boat chilling with your friends listening to gun just Morgan Wallen blaring? Oh my gosh, dude. What could be better? What could be better? Let me know that as well in the comments. Keep it PG-13. You better keep it PG-13 or else. Or else. I don't know what that, what else, but... uh you get the memo. Umbreon. Foul play. Grabs the shield from Swampy Boy. Swamp Nasty. I think Hydro just about knocks out from here. So he's going to put up a shield to get off his next foul play, which makes sense. Ah, we're getting a little greedy, and we keep throwing on bad timing. But that's okay. Because that means there is some room for improvement, and some of these losses may be flipped to wins in the near future. Once Mugiwara... Um, starts 
learning timing a little bit more. Foul play. Knocks out Swamp. Okay, Umbrella still able to win the twos. Yikes. Actually, no, it's not yikes because you have a lantern. I was gonna, I was saying yikes because Talonflame usually when it gets a big farm down with energy is pretty yikes. But you have a lantern, so you're chilling. You are chilling. It's like 60 degrees right now. You're chilling. You're cool. In comes Venusaur, the quick swap. And because the Vine Whips are resisted, you should live a Sludge Bomb here, no problem. And get off the Aerial Ace. Sludge Bomb does a lot. It will live. Oh, why are we getting greedy? Okay. Scaring me a little, Mugiwara. We just want to get off this Aerial Ace. As long as we get rid of Venusaur, we win the game. And uh, Talonflame going to be forced to throw. You already have energy on Lantern. Talonflame would need to like land two Brave Birds, which it probably doesn't have to knock out this Lantern. And uh, doesn't have in terms of like the move Brave Bird, not the energy, I know. Opponent quit. Poor opponent. And that is going to wrap up this submission. Cool Halucha submission. I uh, got a halucha from my buddy Sonoran Man, who's a content creator um, down in Mexico at uh, NAIC last year. I got a pretty decent one. On our, I think it was our first trade, or maybe it was a special trade. I forget. But um, yeah, cool Pokemon. Thank you very much to Mugiwara for the submission. And um, obviously, some of those games, right? We noticed like some plays that could have been done differently, but let's. Uh, Remember that we're all at different spo spots of like learning this game, and I very much appreciate the cool submission and some really nice plays as well and some really nice wins in that set from our submission artist. If you enjoyed this video, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel. If you are new, comment down below. All comments are appreciated. And all that said, thank you for watching. Hope to see you in the next one. Peace.